So one of the biggest questions of deciding whether or not to invest in content marketing is what can we expect out of this strategy? What, what will be the return? And that's a, a valid question. The only challenge is that takes in a lot of different factors. When we look at content strategy, there are a couple of things to keep in mind. It, it depends on where you're starting. So how much content has already been produced on the website? How old is the website? What's their authority when it, it comes to Google? How much organic traffic does it already get? How many backlinks does it already have? The more backlinks it has, the easier it is for con new content that's created to rank on Google. It also just depends, you know, did Google just change their search algorithm? So there are a lot of variables, but you know, we still want to provide some sort of rough estimate of what the opportunity is. And that's why we created this organic traffic forecasting model. Now, the thing to keep in mind is that all models are wrong, right? That's why we named it this. All models are wrong, some are useful. And that's because it's hard to predict the future, but by having a model and basing it off historical performance, you can at least get an idea of what's possible and whether or not you want to invest. So let's get into this. When we walk through each of these tabs, this is going to be a blank model. Here, we're going to add our keywords and the search volume for those keywords. Those volumes will get pulled into this spreadsheet. And there are a couple of assumptions here in columns D to G, which are that if we can get your website to rank in position one for all these keywords that we're about to put in here, and you get a 30% click-through rate on those search results on Google, then you would get a certain amount of traffic there. And then assuming your average rank that we get is number two, then that's a 15% click-through rate. And so on for position three, position four. And the reason we take this average is because rather than trying to guess the potential position for every single keyword that we may get, it's helpful to get a broad idea of where we can get here. And then on the traffic model, it'll pull from those previous sheets what the growth would look like. So here it's all empty and we'll walk through it in detail once we add the keywords in. This break even analysis tab is one of the more helpful tabs because it'll help you understand what you might predict in terms of return and when, depending on how much you invest, in content when you would break even. So I have a list of keywords here. Let's put these in. And now you'll see that these get pulled into this next spreadsheet here. And it does all the calculations for us already. So now when we assume that we can get all these keywords to position one, we may get about 36,000 organic views per month from all these keywords. Position two, we would get about half of that at 18,000. Position three, about 12,000. Position four is about 7,000 monthly organic views from these keywords. So that's total. Um, this doesn't mean that we'll be able to get to position one, two, three, or four immediately, but if we were to get to these final positions in say a year or two, that's how much organic traffic we'd be adding per month. So. When we go into the next tab, the traffic model, this is when a lot of the magic happens. So remember that the assumption is 36,000 for position one is the max addition here. And so here we want to look at the starting point of how much organic traffic we're currently at. So here it's zero. Let's just say you're starting at 10,000 organic traffic. So that just makes it so that you start from 10,000 instead of zero. And the view to lead conversion rate is the rate at which people will visit your website and then fill out a form or sign up for your free product to become a lead. This monthly conversion improvement of 5% assumes that each month you will be able to improve this lead conversion rate by 5%. So that means the following month, this would be 1.05%. So that's relative. 
so we see these pretty charts here of, okay, if we get an average rank in position one, assuming it's linear growth, in one year, you'll get to about 46,000 organic views per month. And for leads, assuming a 1% conversion rate, 5% improvement per month on conversion rate, in a year, you might go from about, let's say this is 100 leads per month to nearly 900 leads per month. So this shows the potential lead growth here. And keep in mind, this is only for these keywords. This is not taken into consideration if you decide to add more keywords. So let's break this down a little bit. If we look at position one, we see that we start at the 10,000 organic views we're currently at. And then one year from now, we assume that perhaps we can get to that average position, uh, position one for all keywords, which depending on the keyword may or may not be realistic, but we'll keep this model simple. So this takes the total ceiling of the position one traffic opportunity and adds it to this starting point, right? So this is the 36,000 plus 10,000. And then this Delta month over month is the change in traffic from one month to the other. So from June, 2020 to July, 2020, it's a 27.7% improvement. And you can see that the month over month change decreases over time. And this is because this is based on linear growth. So you'll see that for July, it essentially takes the difference between July 2021 and J June 2020 and divides that by 11 or by 13. So it evenly distributes the improvement over each month. Now, when you look at the conversion rate, we start at that 1% and we look, we add that 5% improvement per month. So this next row is a new concept here. We want to look at the number of leads from organic traffic per month as well. So if we start at 10,000 organic views per month and we assume a 1% conversion rate, 1% of that 10,000 would become leads. So you get about 100 leads per month. The following month, your conversion gets a little better and 1.05% of 12,770 organic views becomes leads. And you can see this continue to improve over time. And the reason why we see this improving is twofold. One, as you start producing more content to target those keywords, you're gonna start ranking for more keywords. and it's slowly gonna grow over time. The conversion rate will improve over time in two ways. One, the content that you should create will have conversion points. So whether it be throughout the content itself or a call to action at the end of the blog post, there should be a way for readers to go from reading that piece of content to becoming a lead. So you're optimizing that way and also people who read your content may end up clicking through your website to different landing pages and to your lead generation form. All of these parts of your website should also be continually being optimized over time. So as people read the blog post, they may not take action immediately, but they'll browse your website, land on a specific landing page that's been optimized and you can convert them there. And we do the same for position two, three, and four. Now moving along to the break even analysis, we take what we previously had in the traffic model of the organic traffic and the leads. And now we take it one step further. So on a traffic model, the conversion rate is from a view to a lead. So we see that here, this is 1% improving by 5% every month. Now the next step is the rate at which a lead will convert into a customer. Here, we had that assumed at 5%. So if you get 100 leads, five of them might actually become a paying customer. And depending on how you decide to produce your content and run your content strategy, it might be an agency, it might be an in-house content marketer or content strategist. 
you want to put in what your monthly cost is going to be. This might be how much you pay the agency every month, or it might be the total salary for your content team per month. So we take that or organic traffic of 10,000 starting in June 2020 with a 1% conversion into a lead, which gets you 100 leads. Let's say that you're paying $5,000 per month for an agency to run your content strategy and content marketing. If you're paying them 5,000 a month and you get 100 leads, which again, this and in this case, this is month zero, nothing's really happened yet, but your, your cost per lead or CPL will be about $50 and assuming that 5% of those people will convert, you'll get five customers. So 5% of 100 becomes five customers. Now this next column is the lifetime value. This is something, depending on how much data you, your company has, you might either assume or have this already modeled out, modeled out by an operations member. Here we assume that over a lifetime of any customer, they're going to pay us an average of $500. Hopefully it's higher, but for this, ex for this example, we'll use 500. So if you get five customers and you expect for the time that they're a customer, they'll pay you a total of $500, you can expect about 2,500 in revenue. Now this is a negative return, right? So for a couple of reasons, there's the conversion rates, there is the average lifetime value of a customer, all these things can be improved, but for this month zero, assuming these are our numbers, you won't get a return on the content yet. Now, when we look at the next month, you get 1.05% of the 12,000 traffic that becomes 134 leads. And when you divide that by five, when you divide 5,000 by 134 leads, your CPL has decreased because you're getting more leads for the same cost. So this assumes that we're actually starting to rank for some keywords and traffic is coming in, so you're growing your traffic. And this will actually turn into seven new customers at $500 lifetime value each for about $3,300 per month. Still a negative return. And you can see that the negative return happens until month four here. In month four, what happens is the organic traffic has nearly doubled. The conversion rate has improved by a little bit and you, instead of getting 100 leads per month, you get about 200 leads at the same cost. The CPL has decreased by more than half, and you're getting double the customers at the same cost of 5,000. So here you finally break even, and you get more revenue than what you paid in that one month. There's still this the last three months to make up for, but you'll see in the following months, that continues to improve over time. And so we do this the same way for position one, position two, three, and four. And you can see that when you get to position four, the numbers aren't as favorable. So in month zero, again, you're at 50%, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, month eight is when you finally see a break even in a single month. And that means you'll have to make up for the previous seven months. And the way that you can make this better and you can figure out whether it's worth it is maybe your LTV is actually higher. And so let's say you expect a customer to pay you 2000 in a given month. If the average lifetime value there is 2000, you can see positive returns within a month, right? Even for position four, that looks significantly better. Now let's see what happens when it's a thousand lifetime value. And so this depends on in e-commerce or software, it's your average sales value. So here, if it's a thousand lifetime value, even then the, the returns are not as high as a 2000, uh, a, a customer value at $2,000, but a customer value at 1000 would make this model work out really well in terms of how much it would cost to acquire them. So hopefully this helps in helping you understand whether content will be helpful and at least giving you a sense of what the opportunity is and what you can expect from investing in content marketing.